Greetings. Hi, Greg here from First Class Game Studios. And in this video, we're going to be looking at visual scripting and in Unity, uh, specifically in this one, Node Canvas. And this is a part of a series where we've been looking at the different scripting options. So if you like this video, please go below, click that subscribe button, click notification so you can get notified. And uh, this uh, is a, a real thing. Visual scripting is mainstream now. Uh, they're, they're used for AAA games, and designers are using them. And, and understanding the options available are, is what the goal of this is. Now, Node Canvas is not as going to be as popular as, say, Bolt uh, or Playmaker, but Node Canvas is a nice package, and I've used it uh, many times. It, it is really nice. And uh, just understanding how it works just gives you another way of looking at designing games. And uh, I think it's great for lateral thinking. I think it's good for uh, improving your conceptual skills as a game designer. So let's just get started here. Uh, and so we have our usual Flappy Bird uh, here. And um, none of the components that make the bird actually flap or enabled so we're gonna make one here for node canvas if I click add component and hit node canvas remember I'm gonna assume you already got node canvas installed um, and you can follow the installation of these once it's installed we want to we're gonna do a finite state machine you can do this thing with a behavior graph as well but we're gonna do use this and I'm gonna hit create new and I'm gonna also make this one a bound asset meaning it'll automatically just hook it in as a component here and, and we're ready to go and I can put in comments about the graph and so forth if I wish now uh, at this point we have the node canvas area and we will almost always start with you know just some kind of action state that's gonna be at the start so there's always like a start node that when this is gonna basically start everything up and since we're on the bird, this is always going to be relative to anything we do. Uh, just like our other scripts, we'll be applying to this game object. Now, what we want to do is we don't really want to do anything in this state because uh, we actually want to have to hit the space bar before we're actually going to actually have an action to flap the bird. So uh, if I wanted to, I could come up here, and it's not a bad idea, is to just say idle. Um, bird the birds just idle not flapping and now we want to flap the bird so this is kind of a little bit like uh, playmaker again and this is a state machine that's saying this is the idle state and any actions need to happen going here and then when we go to our next state um, we're gonna call this state uh, flap little bird fly so the little bird flies here and there'll be the actions here to go. Now notice though, when we go idle bird to little bird fly, this just says on finish. There's no condition. So as soon as we'd start, it would just go from here to here. And so here is where we assign our keyboard task. And so if I come up here and type key, uh, for example, it'll say check keyboard input. They do have a little thing here where you can say, hey, this is a favorite. I use it a lot. And now you can mark your you know common actions or conditions that you use. So now notice here, now it says if down space, then it's gonna go here to little bird fly. Now we need to assign our actions. Now this is a little bit different. You'll just have to get used to it if you're working uh, with, with Node Canvas on finding what you need to find. Um, I get where I wanna go by knowing I wanna set a property. So I say I wanna set a property and notice how it'll now bring up this set property thing and now it brings uh, up a, like a selector to find it and from this I can find all these different you know components that are on my game object and I can grab my rigid body too and then now here's all my methods that are available so I want to set uh, the velocity and now we can do our Y to up here to give that up velocity and it's just and it's really that simple and then now coming out of here we would want to come back to this state just on finish so as soon as we f fly we just come back here to the idle so again we're seeing the difference of state machines like opposed to like bolt 
is that this is we're in an idle state and it's just going to do the actions in here then we transition to another state where we could you know do other things but in this case we just flap the wings and then go back to our idle state again um, I could have called it the glide state because she's not really idle but let's go ahead and see if it works and there we go and we can see you know all these visual most of them well, and you can see it firing off with the little checkbox and the red shows it always like I think the red means it's uh, conditional and it is like a key down and up if I hold it down it doesn't work it has to fire every time so that's just something how it gets implemented with this mechanism but you can see that's node canvas doing the simple flappy bird mechanism uh, I like it and uh, it also has a really nice uh, tree uh, behavior tree so if you know you like this video please click like please click subscri uh, subscribe and then go down to the comments below if you if you'd like to see another node canvas video or, or a course on node canvas let me know uh, I have courses on Playmaker, I have courses on Bolt, obviously a lot of courses on C Sharp. So, you know, come over to First Class Game Studios, check out uh, my courses. I got a lot of free stuff on there, and I'm giving away f more and more free stuff all the time. I've started a new game program that's much more comprehensive called Mojo. I'm very excited about it, and I'm looking really for, right now, very select uh, people that are very motivated and want to be a game developer, not, you know, just idly think they want to but they want the game developer lifestyle and they're willing to work that 8 to 12 hour days for a few months to to release their games and uh, would like some professional one-on-one -on -one support so you know please come on over uh, to firstclassgamestudios.com if you like these videos and uh, so because uh, I really like helping people make games so Thanks for watching, and we'll continue this series where we'll look at like behavioral des behavior designer and see how we can use behavior designer to implement this same uh, Flappy Bird mechanism as well. Thanks.